Oh my gosh, you guys are freaking relentless. <laughs> but I know it has been a while, and you know what? It's time to do more dream rides. It's time for season dos. Well, I guess that would be four since I'm holding both hands. And we are starting off with a bang. Literally, I, I, I have you hit this car with a hammer at some point. So now that we got that intro out of the way, now it is time for Dream Ride Season 2. Okay, so we are starting this second season with a car that is very, very near and dear to my heart, Pork Chops Jackhammer. Now, before we get started, I'd like to thank my patrons, patron, I guess, for choosing this car from the choices I had up there. And if any of you guys want to vote on whatever car is next, be sure to check out my Patreon and donate just a dollar down below. Ignore ignore the tier levels. I actually need to fix that. <laughs> All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get over my disclaimer. This series is 110% my opinion. I understand that some may disagree with my choices, but definitely try to keep it respectful in the comments. Don't be like this guy that followed me around in my non-acceleration videos and told me how my choice is wrong, or like these guys that keep spending other videos with what they think should be next. I know this may come off as harsh, but keep it on the Hot Wheels videos, I will 100% not respond to you anywhere else. In fact, if you go around my channel and spam me about it, I will actively make sure that I don't do that car next time. Just to spite you, actually. I know this seems kind of harsh, but honestly it's starting to get out of control. And if you guys want this series to keep going, please understand that I have a life and videos that I want to make. I understand that you guys love the series, but you know, it's starting to get to the point where it's getting a little bit ridiculous. These videos prices are also heavily dependent on the deals that I find on the date that I make them. So these are obviously subject to inflation or won't or will be taking advantage of deals that, you know, aren't feasible anymore. All right, now that the serious stuff's out of the way, let's take a look at this eight cylinder beast. Okay, so I looked at this model for what seemed like hours, more like 15 minutes, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what it looked like. On one hand, the front end had a lot in common with the 58 Eldorado, but on the other hand, the car just looked like a 55 Nomad. So I was sitting there until I got a message from JC which said, Hey idiot, it's a Ford Edsel. So I looked up the car and holy snot, it is Jackhammer. With some minor body differences, it looks almost exactly the same. It's got the same dimensions, the same profile, the same headlights. In fact, the only differences that I could find were the engine, of course, the tail lights, and the ridges on the back. But other than that, everything looked exactly the same. And the best part is about these 58 Ford Edsel Villagers is you can find them for dirt cheap. I'm not kidding, you can find some in decent shape for less than $5,000 and ones in perfect shape up to $12,000. But for the sake of simplicity and the cost of the video, we are going to go with eh, around $5,000. Now before we go any further, I would like to give a huge thanks and shout out to Project Nitrox. They supplied me with the models to use for this video, which you can actually take a closer look at yourself by playing Project Nitrox trucks on Roblox. When I say this is the best driving game on Roblox, I mean this is the best driving game on Roblox. The models are incredibly detailed, the driving is super smooth, and they've almost got all the realms done. And the best part is, it's absolutely free to play. Just download Roblox, search up the game, and you have access to all the Accelerators cars to drive against your friends. And yes, that includes the Dior 2, Slingshot, Crazy 8s, and even Marky's prototype of Flathead Fury. Also, within like the next couple months or so, they're supposed to have a huge update that makes the game even more fun to play, so be sure to look forward to that. Plus, me, JC Squared, and Stormgrotch have all been playing this a lot, so there's a pretty fair chance that you're gonna run into us on those realms. <laughs> I'll be sure to link the game down in the description below. All right, now, back to the video. Like the other Maniacs, Jackhammer has a very large exposed motor in the front. However, unlike the other Maniacs, it is not as incredibly high as, say, Torx engine or Taro's motor. Now, especially with the size of Porkchop's engine, which is around 502 cubic inches, I would say that with some slightly taller than normal engine mounts, you could get the desired effect with the engine, especially because the Edsel's stock motor, a 381 small block, is practically already touching the hood. But this is the body mod section, so as far as all that stuff, we will come to that later. So for now, like the other Maniacs, I'm gonna say, print out a 3D printed uh, engine to go on top of the hood. Like I claimed in other videos, this should be printed in multiple pieces so it looks more realistic. I also believe it should be designed as an air intake, similarly the hollowback. The air will be brought in through the bumper, up through those stocks connecting the motor to the hood, and then forced down to the engine bay. Not the easiest system, but as Porkchop says, <laughs> Who needs easy? After designing and printing, this will cost you roughly in the ballpark of $2,500. Now it's time to move on to that pillar. Now normally I would never say to mess with these, but this is one of the few instances that I can make it work without sacrificing safety. Since this pillar is already at a slight angle, using a welder and angle cutter, you can cut a piece of sheet metal in the desired shape and weld it on once it's sanded and cleaned. If you have access to a body shop like I do, this will be pretty much dirt cheap to do. 
just steal a road sign and go to town. <laughs> if not, you can actually expect a body shop to do this for around $300 to $400, depending on where you go. Now for the back. Okay, so this next part for the tail heights is going to be super, super difficult. So make sure you pay very, very close attention. You need to follow these steps to a T, all right? Okay, so first thing you want to do, take off the plastic covering. That, 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 that's it. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Let the bulbs do the shining. You're good. Just all it cost you was some elbow grease. As for the angled pieces on the back, this is as simple as going to Metallica.com and buying some stainless steel triangle shaped pipe and welding it in place. After cost of material, it'll cost you around $200 to get that same body shop to put them in place, bringing both costs to uh, around $400 together. Now, since we're still at the back end, let's take a look at the exhaust, shall we? Okay, so, unlike the Edsel, Jackhammer has a huge twin exhaust coming out of where the license plate ought to be. Now, if you're not going to be driving on the road constantly, you can just take off the plate and forget about it. Cut a hole in the bumper and put these Autosaver 88 4-inch exhaust tips in the back for $30 a tip. But if you are going to put it on the road, I would either A, just forget this part entirely, or B, uh, screw on the license plate to the side of the bumper. One thing I also notice is... Despite its size, Jackhammer's technically a coupe, whereas the Edsel is a four-door, so we gotta do something about that. Now, here's where I started to run into problems. When researching how to turn a four-door into a two-door, the overarching answer was to get the doors from a two-door model and install them. The problem is, the 58 Edsel Villager never had a two-door model, not as a wagon. Sure, the 58 Edsel had a two-door option, but the lines aren't exactly the same as the Villager model we're using. So, unfortunately, we're gonna have to do a little bit more fabrication. Instead of converting to a two-door, we're going to make it look like a two-door. So that means door handles, gone. Door lines, gone. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, I am glad you asked, you completely hypothetical human being. Unless you have a welder, you're going to have to take it to the body shop once again for this one. Once those handles are off, you're going to need to sand that until it is down to the steel. Then, the body shop is going to have to weld the doors in place from both the inside and the outside. Then again, afterwards, you're going to need to take an angle grinder to the top of the weld in an effort to flatten them out. And even then, there's no guarantee it'll look perfect, as the Edsel has some very unique body lines, and as someone who did body work, they're going to be a pain in half to install. Since most hot rodders view this as the wrong way to do it, I couldn't find an exact price for this, so I'd say ballpark expect to pay around $2,500. Though, if you ask me, and to be clear, you are asking me, I'd just leave it as a four-door and take off the door handles. Honestly. Just to get rid of some tiny lines, it's not worth it. Now, before we get into the fun cosmetics, there is one more thing we have to think about, which is whatever the heck that thing on top is. Now, I searched for what this was for a long time, but it seems that there was a huge oversight from the movie team and the design team. See, according to the movie files in the wiki, there's only one engine on Jackhammer, but the trading cards say it's dual engined. So, really, it's kinda up to me to decide which one to pick for this video. But, like I said before, that's engine stuff, so that I'll have to wait till the end of the video. In the meantime, you are going to have to cut another hole in the hood, and 3D print another mechanical looking thing to put on top. With the bodywork and the printing costs, eh, you're gonna have to pay around three grand. And now it is time for one of the most beautiful paint jobs I've ever seen on a Hot Wheel. With that beautiful metal flake gold with the black and burgundy stripes and flames on the side, this is a pretty detailed paint job, so depending on where you go, it's going to cost you roughly eh, $4,500. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's move on to the wheels and tires. Now, like the other Maniacs, I've decided to go with the Kragar 61C wheels, 17 inches in the front and 20 inches in the back. Once you add tires into the equation, it's probably going to put you in a ballpark around $350 a piece. So now with all that put together, this is going to put you at a grand total of $19,760. Now, while we got the big stuff out of the way, we're going to go deeper. That's what she said. See, the Ford Edsel interior is very colorful, which is very not pork shop. So, what do we have to do to make it look perfect? Well, let's start off with the dash. Now, pork chop is easily going to be the most simplistic, as he's a very simple man. Luckily for us, the original steering wheel and column shifter already look super close to pork chops, so just a small respray away from being perfect, probably around $100, $150. Now the gauge cluster is a little bit more difficult, as this is one of the most different parts when it comes to the Edsel. Because there's, there's only three gauges. Now you're definitely going to have to get some sheet metal for this. Because first things first, you need to create a guide. 
Now, these gauges are not nearly enough to tell you all the information you need. There's no oil pressure gauge, there's no engine temperature gauge. It basically gives you engine speed, gas, and actual speed, and that's it. So, I'm gonna deviate a little bit here. You need to add one of those little small gauges that attach to the bottom of the dash. However, these gauges will also include the SAE Competition Gray Gauge from Aurora, which will cost you around 100 bucks. but feel free to add another 200 for the fabrication. Now let's get to the seat and carpet. Now this is actually not that different from the original Edsel. In fact, as far as I can see, it's almost exactly the same. I don't even see a roll cage anywhere. It's pretty much all stock, which for a race car is not a very good idea with bench seats and lap belts and all. That's, uh, that's a really easy way to get split in half. Okay, so put the cost of reupholstering literally everything with the pork chop flare, and you're looking at roughly $3,000, give or take a thousand, since you're not reupholstering the back seats for obvious reasons. Okay, and this actually might be the most easy interior I've ever thrown together, <laughs> with a grand total of roughly $3,450, which for an interior that's movie correct, this is pretty much a steal. <laughs> and now it is time for what is undoubtedly my favorite, favorite part of this whole series, it's the engine. Now, as I said before, there's a lot of confusion when it comes to the motor. Some say it's got one, and some say it's got two. Now, I know before you guys boo at me, for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna go with the single motor version. But don't you worry, I have an idea, a functioning idea for that stuff on top. Let's level with what we know about the motor. We know that it's a stroked 502 cubic inch big block V8 with long tube headers and fuel injection. Now, lucky for us, the hot running community comes through once again. Without even trying, I found a 502 cubic inch big block V8. That makes 545 horsepower, meaning at the crank, you'll probably be making roughly the same as pork chop once you go all through the parasitic, what's the word parasitic? Absorption, I forgot. Basically, you lose a little bit of power through the drivetrain, so this will make it almost exactly 500 horsepower. And even better, it is a Ford big block, which means without pretty much any fabrication, it's going to bolt right in no problem to whatever's currently in there. All for the price of just $7,736, which is actually a lot, but for a motor making that kind of power, it's actually pretty cheap. There's just one problem. It's, it's carbureted. <sighs> Luckily for us, fuel injection kits are a dime a dozen. And I just happened to find this Holly Sniper for around $1,500. With the parts 3D printed earlier, you could easily attach that on top and add an air cleaner and your porky torky motor is set. But what about that weird doohickey on the back? Well, I believe I've actually found something that will work in this case. We're gonna turn that son of a gun into a cooling and nitrous system. You didn't really think we'd leave out nitrous, right? If we move the radiator up there, move the piping, the coolant overflow, and the two nitrous bottles, we'd have something that actually looks pretty close. All this together, and you could probably build that for around $1,500 if you were to get it done professionally. And now, after all that, it is time for the grand total. For the base paint job and look of the car, you are looking to spend around $19,760. For the base plus the interior, expect to spend around $24,210. And for the ultimate super big softy of Accelerator's build, you are going to spend roughly $34,946. Anchor chain not included. So that about wraps things up for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm very happy to be doing this series again. It's been like almost six months since the last one I did. So I think I might take these like, I'll do six yearly because these videos take a lot of time to produce and edit and all that jazz. Once again, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Specifically like and comment, that stuff really gets the algorithm moving. If you want your car to be picked next, feel free to uh, donate to my Patreon down below. I'd really appreciate it. So uh, yeah, that about wraps things up. I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.